Hello. So yeah, I didn't notice that the classes on this week are cancelled due to the interview. Uh, yeah, because I mean, since last time we didn't cover the chapter ten, I mean, so there are remaining stops in the I mean chapter I mean tenth chapter that we are covering about the uh, independent set. I will conclude the chapter ten and then probably skip the last I mean lecture lecture twenty seven. We don't do it, so we will end it in twenty six. So it's a uh, I mean, I know that the uh, classes are all cancelled this week, but uh, please understand that we do cover one more lecture this week. Anyway, so what have we done so far? We defined this hardcore model, which is useful for estimating or, I mean, useful for, I mean, getting op information about the uh, independent sets on a given graph and last time we showed that if we have a triangle free graph and if we have its maximum degree at most t then we show that this alpha of g1 is at least 1 plus 0 of 1 times log t over t. So what was this alpha g over 1 is uh, nothing but the, I mean, you choose the independent set. So we define this alpha g lambda as the I mean, you consider the hardcore model, meaning that the each independent set i of g is chosen with probability lambda to the size of i over the partition function or independence polynomial of p. So this is defined as uh, your summation of all independent set. You summed up this number. So this is basically saying that uh, out of all independent set, we choose this independent set with a probability probability proportional to this lambda to the i. So if lambda is smaller than one then we are more likely to choose small independent set. If lambda is bigger than 1, then we are more likely to choose large independent set. And if we consider this as 1, then every independent set is chosen with the same probability. So out of all independent set, we choose one uniform and random. And in that hardcore model, I mean, alpha of lambda is average size of the independent set which has which can be either written as i mean which can be actually written as this expression <coughs> and because we can actually write this in terms of this partition function and in some, I mean, analytic way. So we can actually estimate it in a more easier way by using some tools from analysis or calculus. And we show this last time. <coughs> and as a application of this, we can actually show that the Ramsey number 3K is at most uh, more or less k square over log k with the uh, constant here being 1. The best known lower bound is like 1 over 4 plus 3 of 1 times k square over log k by using triangle free process. So 
Yeah. So the, there is this gap of multiplicative constant m of 4. Anyway, how we can get this upper bound is what we have to show to show this upper bound. We have to show that if n is 1 plus 3 of 1, k square over log k, then g is on n vertex graph. Then, so let me remember is about the coloring on complete graph. Red color and blue color on edges. Let's say you want to find the red triangle or blue KK. You consider red colors as an edges, blue color as an non edges. Then this G is same as a edge coloring on the complete graph. So here, if we can show that either G has a triangle or an independent set of size k. If we show this, then we actually show that the R3k is at most n. So this is what we want to show. So assume this is not the case, that means let's say g is I mean if g has a triangle we are done so let g be a triangle free graph then what do we have? if a vertex v in g has degree k degree at least k then what happened? then we have v and its neighborhood if there is an edge here then we automatically get a triangle so in triangle free graph the neighborhood of vertex is always independent set so we find the independent set of size at least k so we are done so we assume that the maximum degree of g is at most k then what do we get the previous pro position previous theorem gives that g has a I mean average size of random independent set there has size at least this that means there exists at least one independent set with size at least this times n so this is the fraction of the I mean fractional version of the average size of an independent set so it says that it has an independent set of size at least one plus log zero one times log d over t so here is k log k over k times n but what was n? We assume n is this. So this is at least k. So in this case, we have an independence of a set of size k. So in either case, we conclude that uh, if n has this many vertices, then either it has a triangle or independent set of size k. So this is an upper bound, best known upper bound. And yeah, as I mentioned, the lower bound is from triangle free process, which was invented by Jung Ang Kim in Kias. And he got the Fulkerson medal, medal for Fulkerson Prize from, for that. And later people optimized the constant, which actually gives us this quarter. So originally Jung Ang Kim showed that, that there exists some constant here, which provides a lower bound and then later people optimize it. <coughs>
So, now, what was our goal, remember? So, one of the, our goal is to show that uh, among all graphs, all D-regular graph G, again, I mean, what's the maximum number of independent set? We did, again, the union of complete bipartite graph. <coughs> Previously, we showed that for all bipartite D-regular graph. So, among all D-regular bipartite graph, union of disjoint, disjoint union of KDD maximize the number of independent set. But now we want to show that for all, over all D-regular graph, not necessarily bipartite. For that, we first want to show the following theorem. So for all T regular graph, G and all lambda, we have that uh, in the hardcore model, the average size of independent set I mean more of a uh, the fraction so we actually called called it occupancy fraction which is uh, I mean every size of independence set divided by the number of vertices so this occupancy fraction is maximized for a complete bipartite graph So C in the above, I mean, we consider this occupancy fraction, we fix G and then we estimate it. But here, what we are varying is we don't fix G. And we want to find the upper bound. And why do we do this? Is that uh, as we saw before, this is nothing but the uh, this is actually the derivative of log, uh, let's say, 1 over order of g times log of partition function. But uh, if we plug lambda equal 1 here, then this partition function just counts the number of independent set. So if we know this, then we can kind of integrate later to figure out information about this. And if you know the information about this, then we get the information about this. And then you plug in lambda equal one, then we can actually count the number of independent set. So that's one of the motivation why, I mean, we prove this when we want to count the number of independent sets. <coughs> so, again, similar as before, we define when vertex is occupied. So we choose the independent set i drawn from the dis distribution of hardcore model with fugacity lambda. And we say the vertex b is occupied if it's covered by the independent set, and we say this is uncovered if none of its neighbors are covered by the independent set. And we define this P of B with the probability that it is occupied, and Q of B is the probability that is, it is uncovered. So we define all this before. Um, so let's first consider the simple situation. Assume G is triangle free. Then, previously we, in the previous theorem, we set up the similar thing and we use this property 
to actually show that uh, this alpha, o, I mean alpha g of lambda is same as this, and alpha g of lambda is at least, I mean, at least this. But the second at least point, uh, wait, wait, not here, let me see. So we show that, uh, yeah, it's equal to this. Alpha of lambda is equal to this, and we show that the uh, uh, alpha of lambda is at least this. And second, this at least point was coming from the maximum degree MOSD, but uh, if we know that this is deregular, this is actually equality. So, by the same logic, we can again prove these two. So everything actually works through the same. So we have so it seems that we forgot I forgot to recall what Y was. Uh, the setting is that the uh, SAB prime is a uh, uniformly uh, random. is a vertex which is uniformly uh, uniformly chosen at random and we let y be the number of uncovered neighbor of b prime so b prime is chosen at, at random i is chosen at random and we consider we count the number of uncovered neighbors of b prime so we have this equality and also we have this equality. <coughs> so now What's different? Before G was fixed, and then we want to kind of optimize this to find the best lower bound. So G is fixed, that means lambda is also fixed. I don't know, not lambda. G is fixed, so here, I mean, we wanted to find the lower bound on give me a moment uh... yeah when g is fixed we wanted to find the lower bound but here g is not fixed so we want to i mean find an upper bound. We want to find the maximum over all G. So now we are allowed to change G, which means we are allowed to actually change the distribution of Y. Before, distribution of Y is fixed, and then we want to find the best lower bound. That was the previous theorem. But now we actually change Y to get the maximum of this number. So we do optimization over all distributions of Y. In other words, over all graph G. So what we want to find is that, uh, let's say, lambda over T1 plus lambda times, let's say, supremum over all Y, which is a distribution. You want to find extremum, or, I mean, expectation of y, when expectation of y and d times expectation of 1 plus lambda to d minus y is same. So when these and these are same, so which is encoded here, we wanted to find the maximum independence, I mean, expectation of y, and then we multiply this, then that's 
gives this. So this is clearly an upper bound on alpha of lambda. So we want to find this. But watch this. This is same as, let's say x of i be the probability that y equal i. Then this is we want same as the this linear programming. What's this? This is nothing but the say k is from zero to d k times x d x k. And what's the condition? So x i x k has to sum up to one because it forms a probability distribution. And of course, this y is between 0 and k, because this is a number of uncovered neighborhood of this random vertex p prime. But the graph is deregular, so it can, I mean, there can be between g, 0 and d many uncovered vertices. And also, how do you write this in an equation? You take the xk, say, expectation of this expression and this expression say 1 plus lambda to d minus k minus k over d equals 0. So you just take the expectation of y minus say 1 over d expect uh, you can write it this way. So this is same meaning that the expectation of 1 plus lambda to d minus y minus d over expectation of y equals 0. And you rewrite this, then you get this. Because for each k, you take the probability that y is k, then you multiply this, and you subtract k over d. So we want to solve this <coughs> linear programming. So how do we do this? What we want to show is that this is maximized when x0 and xd are non-negative and left 0. So we want the case where, because I mean this is exactly the case when g is kdd. If this is kdd, if one vertex here is chosen, then none of the vertices here are uncovered. So all of this, so random, so so this is in I, and then this is B prime, and all of the neighbors are not uncovered, because every vertex here has a neighbor in U. So it's y is 0. But the random vertex is in here, and all the independent set vertices are here. Then its neighborhood are never covered, because none of the, these vertices are in independent set. So here are all uncovered. So for this graph, only x0 and xd has a non-negative value, and everything else has zero priority. So x1 to x d minus 1 is all zero. So you want to show that the, this linear programming, the maximum occurs when none of, the, none of the values in the middle are zero. So again, if you have a convex function, average of these is actually smaller than the average of two, I mean, end points. So you take the average, then you get the sum value here, 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 and then you take the weighted average. Then everything actually occurs below this line. So it's actually better to take this line and then, I mean, take the correct weighted average. So that's the intuition. So we want to use convexity. 
So let's say fn is 1 plus lambda to the x minus x over d. This is a convex decreasing function. What do we know? f0 is 1 and fd is smaller than 0. So let me write it in a better way. So this is the graph of this function. So what do we know? For each i between 0 and d, the convexity of f actually shows that fi is smaller than d minus i over d f0 plus i over d ft. So this just says that uh, if we have, say this is i, then comparing this value and this value, then this is up, this is above. That's what this means. So this is nothing but uh, you just take the, this linear line passing through these two points and take the appropriate points. <coughs> so now what do you want to do? We want to show, show that in here, we have a i times, um, let's say, no. On here, we have xi times fi. We want to divide this xi into some x prime 0, x prime d. What, and we want to replace this with 0, and then we want to increase this amount. So x0 becomes x0 plus x0 plus x prime 0, and xd becomes x prime d. in a way that uh, this summation is still kept and this being zero is still there, but this increase. So we want to delete xi and then distribute it to zero and d while we keep these two, inequality, two equalities same and this actually increase. That's our goal. Then let's use this function to indicate how we gonna distribute it. In order to keep the first one, we have to distribute it in a way that the, I mean, this is a g, then this value we add it here is x i minus g. So we add g to f zero to zero and this much to d then how this change is that the f0 times g increase and xi minus g times fd increase and we want this to be actually 0. We want to find the g which makes this 0 so that this equation is still true. And while we're doing that, we want to make sure that this increase. But what do we know? We have this. So if we rewrite that, then what's for, say, this value, if you plug that in, then what do we have? This is d minus i times xi over d, f0, plus if you subtract this from here, then i xi over t, ft, then without this, this is exactly that. So this is actually xi fi, and we know that this function is convex decreasing. So this is xi ft, which is g of 0. If you plug in 0 here, then this is 0, this is xi fd. 
So we have this. So when we plug in zero, then it's smaller than this specific number. Here, it's actually bigger. So by the intermediate value theorem, what do, what do we know? There exists G such that G of G is exactly Xi Fi. So yeah, so I actually said slightly not accurate. So what we wanted to do is to make sure that the here xi fi will be gone and this is additional amount that we want we get so we want this to be e x actually equal as xi fi yeah and that is actually achieved for some g with uh, this value between 0 and t minus i over t xi, which is smaller than xi. So what we do is we replace xi by 0 and x0 by x0 plus g, x d by xt plus xi minus g. Then with this new choice, first condition is obvious, still holds. And second condition, by our choice, this also holds. But watch this. So how much it decreases is that the uh, so this is from the original one and you decrease by i xi and you increase by g x0 plus xi minus t uh, sorry plus so this part is not negligible, negligible because you multiply zero in here. So this is actually t. Uh, g. T x i minus g. Then what's this? Give me a moment. Uh, so this is original times minus i x plus t x i minus t g. Did I miss something? Give me a moment. Ah, yes. Am I missing one term? Give me a moment. So xi ti is gone. So this doesn't contribute. This is here.
zero is okay and xi i t times xi g t minus i xi minus t g ah yeah. So, but what do we know? Tg is at most t minus i times xi. So this is what we know. So, yeah. So our power, by our choice, we know this. So we actually add bigger one and subtract the smaller one. So this is as large as the original one. Yes. So we repeat this for all i between 0 and d. Then we know that the a maximum occurs when x1 to xk minus 1 are all 0. Now we have only two variables, x0 and xd. Let's say you take one as x and the other one as 1 minus x, and you solve the this linear equation, I mean linear programming, this is simple. I will leave it as an exercise, then you can actually show that the maximum is when these values are exactly this. This is exactly when she is KDD, or this joint union of KDD. So, this proves for the triangle free case. So, in the next video, we will do for general non triangle free graph case.